Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Josh. Hi. And today we're going to be showing you three different FPV ground station setups. You got it. You guys asked for it and we're going to give it to you. Yeah. All right. So we're here behind us. We have David Vindestol from Sweden. Yeah, he's having some fun with the Twin Star. Yeah. So let's go check out what we got back yeah. here. All right. Now, normally at a car lot, they go from the high end and then they go down to meet your budget. But really? we're going to go the other direction. Okay. Does that sound good? Opposite of the car. Yeah. Opposite of the car lot. You got okay. it. Why don't you show them what we got here? Yeah. Well, right here is a little teeny tiny monitor. Yep. It's cute. Basic monitor, you gotta see what the plane is doing. Looks like you uh, jacked that out of somebody's escalator or something. We won't talk about that. All right. Yep, and you got a uh, video receiver. 12 channel receiver. And you got your power supply. And that's it? That is it. This is as cheap and as crude as you can possibly go. Now, obviously there's a lot of disadvantages. Mm -hmm. you, you need to build some kind of box around your monitor to be able to actually see your image because on a right, nice sunny, sunny day, day. You, you wouldn't see anything. It right. wouldn't be a good experience. And also you got a very basic antenna here. Um, it's omnidirectional, so you're not gonna have a great amount of range, mm -hmm. but for something like a park flyer, it'd work. Okay. And honestly, this exact setup is the first time I ever flew. This is exactly what I had right here. Oh, wow. So you can have fun with it, but uh, it's a little nerve wracking, a little frustrating. Very limited. Very limited and okay. uh, most likely it's gonna cost you some planes once you go out of a range and stuff. Uh -oh. But to start, the nice thing about uh, video uh, receivers is this, this can go on. Mm -hmm. with you. This can actually carry on to your next ground station. Oh, cool. So all this technology can actually be integrated in the next step up. You don't have to go out and buy all new stuff. And this Even, can go back in your Escalade. That can go back in your Escalade or actually in the next one right here. Okay. All right, let's move on down. Right here. Now, this is it's pretty a fancy. More here. Advanced. Yeah, this yeah, is th cool. This is Chad's uh, custom uh, built, custom built ground station, and it is amazing. What we have that you can't see behind that nice big uh, 19 inch monitor is a patch antenna. It's a directional antenna that's going to give you far more range. You also got a nice DVD recorder down here. DVD is and, important. Uh, it's important to record a DVD uh, in case you go down, right? Because that way you can have a better assessment of where you went down. You nailed it, man. In so. case you go down, also, you know, in case uh, you do something really good like. Uh, have a really good shot, you can you can keep it for right. prosperity. So, but yeah. if you go down, then the search party knows where to look. So. Absolutely. Now, I was talking about your receiver going with you, mm -hmm. right here. You got your receiver. Right here. And the patch antenna is plugged into that. There so one is. receiver, a DVD recorder. This even has a power backup. As you can see, we're plugged in right now right. to a 120 source. Um, God forbid the power goes away, you still have video, yeah. uh, which is a really, really good thing. So this one has to be tethered to an actual 110. Uh, obviously, we're just uh, 30 feet from Chad's house, and that's yeah. why. But if you have a natural disaster, or the power goes out in no your FPV house, you can still you. fly FPV because yeah. you got the battery backup. Battery backups are good. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the next step up. It's a really nice step, and, and probably, I'm guessing, about 80% of what we do, we use this guy right here. Yeah. But we've gotten a little bit more advanced lately. All right, let's use, see Using a Hobby King's a Eagle Tree a diversity controller mm -hmm. and a couple really crazy antennas that Dave's made. We get to have a right. lot of fun. We have the best of both worlds. Okay, let's and, see this. Uh, hello, Mr. Vindestel. How's it going up there? A little bumpy? Yeah, okay? yeah, it's bumpy up there. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's a little bumpy. Now, yeah. Dave has, I guess, the, the most advanced system we have right now, and, and it combines the best of both worlds. We have directional for uh, long distances and we have omnidirectional so in case he goes behind us so you have a lot of do uh, a lot of uh, nice features mm -hmm. now this guy count how many receivers you got there brother oh uh, there's one and two you nailed it we two. got we got two receivers working simultaneously but you need something to control it. you need something to say what's the best signal and grab onto that and that's where that's from, right hobby here. king has a really nice uh, it's a very affordably priced something called a diversity controller not only does it actually assess the picture quality, but it'll actually switch automatically based on which one's better. Wow. So say David flies suddenly behind him, say the mm -hmm. wind carries him, he's behind him, that directional antenna is gonna go kaput, so he's gonna get a black screen. Yeah. If he didn't have a diversity controller. Right, diversity but controller. this Omni right here, this uh, skew, clover. skew planer, did I say it right? Yeah. Skew yeah. planer right there antenna, gives More you a nice clover. omnidirectional, uh, so he can actually go behind him, he won't lose it, it'll automatically switch. Along with that, we, we took our little uh, DVD recorder with a monitor built in. Right here. And so people can come up, they can see what you're doing. Yep, you can see right here. And the diversity controller also has a video splitter. You never want to Y off and just split your signal on your video. It's going to degrade the picture quality every time you split it and make it very unstable. So the diversity actually mimics it, copies it, and shoots it down so you can have multiple outputs. And that's really nice. Um, Dave, obviously, in a previous episode, he gave us a ride, didn't he? Mm -hmm. We had yeah. a lot of fun. And also, you can use the uh, Fat Shark goggles as well, like David has on right here. I think that is the best and the most fun way to fly FPV. Yeah. Well, it makes me a little queasy, but. And this one here is totally local. You can put this in the back of the car. It is all powered by a nice big honking 5,000 milliamp three cell battery pack. This all this is based off of uh, um, 
what is it? 12 volts. 12 volts. Honk, 12 volts. Honk. Yeah. Yeah. Honking. Yeah. And, and Chad also has a nice backup here in case his uh, fat sharks go out. His fat sharks uh, work off of a two cell lipo. The basics one works off of a 12 volt. So be careful on that. But he has a backup in case he loses uh, voltage on his battery pack on his goggles. He can actually plug that in really quick and restore a signal. Cool. So, so basically, this is as advanced as we have, but you can even add more onto it. You can do more. You can do a lot more with this. Basically, it just uh, depends on your budget mm -hmm. and the time you want to put into it. Wow. So, yeah. So, what, what, what is it that puts all of this information? here on the screen like right. you have your altitude and your battery life yeah distance from home and everything distance from home brother yeah. i'm so happy you pointed that out that's actually called on-screen display okay. and that's not incorporated in your ground station that's actually inside the airplane uh, it has uh, current sensors it has a gps um, basically to give you all the data that you're uh, seeing right there it actually okay. compiles it so that is something that you do not put in your ground station but is actually in the airplane right now transmitting down through the video signal and the neat feature about that on-screen display is going back to this eagle tree that I'm really impressed with the Hobby King cells. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, the eagle tree has the ability, it'll have a sub-carrying signal that'll go down to it, and it can actually split that signal, and that'll go to your computer, and you can actually track what your plane's doing real time on your laptop computer, and it'll record it too. Oh. So that's a really nice feature. You can have all your data that the uh, GPS in the airplane is actually uh, sending down, and it can be recorded, uh, put on Google Earth real time. Wow. And, and that's really amazing. That is cool. It's really, really cool. Dave's having a lot of fun yeah, up there. Flying overhead. And uh, so basically, the Eagle Tree does a whole bunch of, of really great stuff. Now, also, along with that uh, signal, mm -hmm. it can use it for an antenna tracker. Okay. Like, we have diversity right here, which is really great. Right. But this long-range antenna, which is directional, we can actually have an antenna tracker on that where it'll actually keep that antenna pointed right at the airplane real time. Hmm. So that's a real nice feature. If you want to fly real far away, but all around you, behind you, everything, you can actually use the long-range antenna. So. It just goes up there, and the neat thing is, like I said earlier, it all builds on itself. Yeah, you can just keep adding. Yep, you don't have to dumpster the old stuff and get a whole new batch mm -hmm. of stuff. You can just keep building on. And also, it gets looking cooler and cooler. The more you go, uh, yeah. the more diabolical it looks. Diabolical. Diabolical. That's a new vocabulary that's word. That's a great today. word. It is. It is. Great word. Well, I think that's basically it. Dave's having fun. You about out of juice yet? Not yet. Not yet. Still going. Halfway wow. Halfway there. Halfway there. Party animal. Yeah. Very cool. So basically, that's the key to success. Find out your budget. Find out your application you're going to do. If you're going to be flying park flyers, you can go something on the lighter side. Mm -hmm. If you want to go uh, farther out, um, go something bigger go and more crazy, reliable. crazy, man. Yeah. And also bases on the plane, price of the plane, too. Right. Yeah. You don't want to put a little bit of money in a real expensive airplane. No, no, no. That would be a bad thing. No, especially not if you're going to bring it down. Yep. Probably well, will. there's the basics, friends. There it is. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Hobby King, for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you guys keep subscribing to our channel. Absolutely. And we'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. All right. I want to fly. Yeah. Whoever pops the most balloons. Or sets them free. Or sets them free. So if we cut the streamer and it yeah. takes off, that counts. Or uh, So we're putting we're, them out of their misery or setting them free. Yes. And we're doing this all by FPV. I don't know if we mentioned that or not. Right. FPV all the yeah. way. We're gonna yeah. be doing it with uh, our, our Maxi Swifts. And yes. Our GoPros and stuff. Oh, let me get that. Yeah. Real quick. yeah grab your Maxi Swift. We'll show how. We each have basically the exact same airplane. Uh, we use this on flight test a lot for the air to air videos. And so there it is. And we, we have, have toothpicks. Toothpicks.